Welcome to the Neuropathy Support Group and Podcast. I'm Chris, and I'm so glad you tuned in. It's my hope with this podcast to help all of us gather information that might help those that need support dealing with this debilitating issue. Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Before we get started, let's get the formalities out of the way with the medical and privacy disclaimer. I am not a doctor or medical professional. The information on this podcast is from personal experiences and is meant for group support. Additionally, the information discussed is not meant to diagnose, treat, or cure any underlying conditions associated with neuropathy. All names here within are private and will not be shared with any outside sources. Please consult your health care provider before making any health decisions. If you have medical concerns or an immediate emergency, please contact your doctor or dial 911. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to another week. I hope you had a great weekend. Mine was really slow, not much going on. Watched a few movies, and that was it about for me. I've been having a lot of issues trying to get to sleep. I see my um, psychologist here. In a couple of days, so hopefully I'll get another regiment changed around so I'm able to fall asleep a lot easier. Also, the knee and my pain is still prevalent, and it still hurts a lot. So, for that, I don't go and see anybody until March for an x-ray or an MRI to be done at that time. And two last things before I get this episode started. Those uh, maximum strength neuropathy support uh, formula pills, herbs, and vitamins I've been taking from Neutrina, I stopped taking them. They're not doing anything, not anything at all that I've noticed any difference. So I decided just to stop them. It wasn't worth the 50 bucks that, you know, it says it is. And finally, those new hemp gummies that I bought that were 350,000 high potency, Gummy bears, I'm up to four of them. Um, at three, I felt a little different. At four, no. So I'm probably going to bump up to five and see how that how well that works for me there also. And I think that's it. I think I've caught up on all the things that I've done so far. Um, but this episode, we're going to get into um, what is diabetic leg pain. The reason why I'm getting into this episode is not only because I have it, but I've seen a lot of people posting that they're having this pain, you know, and issues going on. So I decided to make another episode. And what helps out too is that I find new information on, you know, those those things that I've already repeated before. So hopefully some of this information will help you out. So let's get started. So first let's start off with what is diabetic leg pain? Diabetic neuropathy is a nerve disorder that originates as a big condition of diabetes and the word neuropathy which indicates a conduction or condition of the nerves. Also known as diabetic peripheral neuropathy, this condition is unfortunately common in patients with poorly controlled diabetes. There are two types of diabetes which you all know, type 1 and type 2. If the blood sugar is not properly controlled, the small capillaries that deliver blood to the nerves become damaged. This damage occurs mainly on the peripheral periphery of the body, the legs and feet, most commonly, but it can occur anywhere else. When the nerves are damaged, diabetic leg pain can occur. The condition can affect several nerves in the limbs, including sensory nerves, motor nerves, autonomic nerves, Sensory nerves are those that receive sensations like a pain or a touch. Motor nerves control movement and autonomic root nerves control functions like blood pressure. I'm going to post it right now. They have this little YouTube uh, video that you can uh, look at. It's called Inside Diabetic Peripheral Neuropathy. And maybe that will give you some ideas of what's going on. There you go. I just posted it. So the risk factors... An estimated 50% of people with diabetes experience neuropathy. The condition is most common in individuals who have difficulty controlling their blood sugar levels. So when diabetes, especially with uncontrolled blood sugar, is the most common cause of peripheral neuropathy, there are other risk factors that you should include, which is alcoholism, 
vitamin deficiencies, infections such as Lyme disease or shingles, autoimmune diseases, and repetitive motions. So let's discuss what does diabetic leg pain feel like. Symptoms can impact not only feelings, but also movement. Diabetic neuropathy typically begins gradually with numbness or tingling in feet or in hands, and, wins, and then spreads throughout the limbs. Burning and sharp pains are also common. Other symptoms that occur as the syndrome progresses are varied and can include the following. There may be change in the skin, hair, or nails. People often experience muscle weakness. Sharp shooting and burning pain occurs. Paralysis can also occur if the motor nerves are affected. Changes in blood pressure causes dizziness or dis digestive problems. Wounds heal more slowly and that's the problem I have. Some patients experience gastrointestinal issues and others have an is uh, increase in your urinary tract infections. Now the symptoms follow a progression, but everyone who suffers from diabetic leg pain may suffer them to different degrees. The progression depends on being alert for symptoms early on and taking action to slow the damage. You know, I had these actions and I, and I also did uh, alert the issues that I was having to many doctors, but still nobody did anything. Nobody knew anything. And the only way they could help me was just keep giving me opiates, which eventually didn't work because your body gets used to them. So here's one that everybody always wants to know. Can diabetic neuropathy be reversed? Your body is incredibly resilient. There are many types of nerve damage that can be healed. In fact, one of the most frustrating things about some chronic pain treatments is that the fact that nerves heal and begin sending signals again. But when it comes to leg pain caused by diabetic peripheral neuropathy, the damage is usually permanent and irre irreversible. This is why blood sugar control, weight management, and other preventative treatment is so necessary and so important. See, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know why they want to get our, get our hopes up in regards to uh, neuropathy being reversed because if that's the case, nobody sure has helped me with that. And if that's the case, I haven't seen any tests or anything that people have said they've got, you know, change in their neuropathy. I just feel it doesn't happen. I've had it for 12 years and during that whole time, nobody's ever said, hey, you know what, let's try this. It might reverse it. No, mm -mm, not for me. So here's some recent research into uh, diabetic leg pain. Over 100 million adults in the U.S. are either living with diabetes or heading that way. Researchers have been hard at work in the past two decades trying to untangle a standard of care for diabetes and related diabetic leg pain. It's clear from the following studies that there are ways to better prevent and manage diabetic peripheral neuropathy. And here's five of them that I'm going to give you. So the first thing is going to be management and prevention of diabetic leg pain. It depends. Research in 2016 debunked other studies that focused on aggressive management of blood sugar. It appears that the successful prevention strategies depend on the type of diabetes a person has. Blood sugar control is the most important for type 1 diabetes, while controlling weight is the focus for type 2. Number 2 is going to be monitoring at rest people is key. Because diabetes relies on patients' compliance with treatment protocols, one of the best ways to prevent diabetic peripheral neuropathy is to monitor patients who, who might not comply with care. Un, uh, using better diagnostic tools and paying close attention to at-risk patients can prevent diabetic leg pain from developing or worsening. Number three, management of symptoms is multi-pronged approach. The symptoms of diabetic neuropathy are challenging to manage. Because of this, researchers are finding that the best treatment approach is a multi-pronged one. Crucial aspects include early diagnosis, 
prompt intervention and pain treatment. Number four is exercise can reduce symptoms. Even if you're experiencing diabetic leg pain, exercise can be shown to relieve some of the most disturbing symptoms such as pain, numbness, difficulty with movement. In the simplest terms, exercise appears to prevent pain-inducing triggers from occurring and increase positive nerve signaling when it comes to movement. And number five is quit smoking dramatically lowers your risk. One of the healthiest, healthiest things you could do in general is quit smoking. It turns out that smokers with diabetes have a much higher risk of developing diabetic peripheral neuropathy than those that do not smoke. Smokers also have trouble regulating blood sugar and are more likely to be obese. So here's some um, how to's, how to prevent, treat, and relieve diabetic leg pain. Our bodies are wonderfully individual, so your treatment path won't be the same as every other patient. The best approach is to talk to your doctor to find the best way to prevent, treat, and relieve the, uh, diabetic leg pain for you. And so here's some uh, nine tips that might help you to manage and relieve diabetic leg pain. Use exercise to promote health, overall health. Physical activity remains one of the most basic lifestyle modifications recommended to patients with diabetes. For patients with type 2 diabetes, one of the key benefits of exercise may be prevention of diabetic leg pain. Physical activity helps cells develop greater sensitivity to insulin. This helps the body better process it. Exercise also activates a special cellular activity that includes and involves absorbing blood glucose, and that's according to the American Diabetes Association. Other benefits of exercise include weight loss, stress relief, reduced risk of heart attack and stroke, and better circulation. Some of the keys uh, that you might want to uh, look into is eating whole grains, lean proteins, and lots of fruits and vegetables, which are key to help with uh, diabetic neuropathy, leg pain. Limiting processed foods, sugars, and excessive dairy can help also. Number three, manage your weight. Related to lifestyle changes that include diet and exercise, all the steps you take to lose weight. Losing weight is an important step for reducing any type of leg pain, but especially diabetic leg pain. Number four, maintain appropriate blood sugar levels. Maintaining stable blood sugar levels is key to preventing nerve damage that occurs when wild blood pressure strikes or spikes. And that was the one issue I believe I had 11, 12 years ago that that's where all my damage came from because nobody knew what was wrong with me, but it, it had to have been high blood pressure spikes. That's what caused all the nerve pain and also caused my uh, neuropathy. Number five, practice daily foot and leg care. Because early detection is key, proper foot and leg care is crucial in preventing diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Check your feet and legs every day for cuts, scrapes, blisters, swelling, and redness. Any moisture, massage for good uh, circulation. Keep your feet clean and dry. Wear clean socks every day and invest in high quality, properly fitted footwear. And to me, that's the big one in regards to the cuts, scrapes, and blisters. Make sure you check your feet all the time to make sure that you don't have any because you know for us it's harder for those areas to heal when that happens so that's one thing that I ask you to do is keep your eye on your feet so number six build healthier habits for compounded prevention if you could only manage one change at a time that is certainly better than nothing but the most powerful prevention and treatment occurs when you use each of these strategies together change your diet and adding exercise will help you with weight management. I'm sorry, people. I'm so tired. Symptom management plus diet and exercise magnifies the effects of each one of those tools. Change is hard. It may seem like insurmountable ob obstacle, but every step you take to prevent further damage from peripheral neuropathy 
means a better quality of life. So number seven, try physical therapy. As diabetic leg pain progresses, it may become harder and harder to maintain motivation to exercise. This is where physical therapy can be a, a lifesaver. Physical therapists design a tailored set of exercises that help increase circulation, relieve pain and stretch, and strengthen the muscles of the legs. These sessions can also help manage both weight and blood sugar. Another benefit of physical th therapy is that it can ensure proper posture and gait training. If you have been walking off balance due to leg pain, that can affect your whole body. A physical therapist can help you recognize that, uh, that and work to fix it or better overall health and prevent other related pain issues that might come up. Number eight, look into topical treatments and medications. Topical treatments can relieve, help relieve diabetic leg pain with a few side effects or drug interactions. Consider using lidocaine patches and capsaicin creams to alleviate your pain. Although opiates are not suggested for diabetic leg pain, over-the-counter pain relievers may provide relief when pain flares up. Other medications to treat this type of chronic pain may include antidepressants. Now, let's go back here and look at the part where it says capsaicin cream. Um, for me, and I'll give you a warning on this product, for me, it burned my skin. It is, it is very hot, and I just felt I was more in pain than I was feeling any better. So, in my suggestion, I wouldn't use it because it didn't work for me. But you may be different. It may not affect your skin the same. So, that'll be between you and your doctor. And the last thing here I wanted to say, too, in regards to what we just read, is the opiates don't help. Well, they're helping me with my neuropathy. So again, that might be different for everybody. So let's get to number nine here. Time is coming up here, we're almost done. Number nine, talk to your doctor about diabetic uh, leg pain treatments. If more cons uh, conservative approaches do not work and your pain is progressing, there are other options. Interventional strategies that can help relieve diabetic nerve pain include Pain relieving injections, which is what I'm getting now in my back and spine. TENS unit therapy, I use that all the time and it does help. And nerve blocks, which I've never had before. But those are some of the uh, things that you can try or, uh, you know what, but before you do try anything, always, 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 like I say, ask your doctor to make sure that it's okay to do so or to make any type of changes to your regimen. Don't do it on your own. Get a hold of your doctor and have them give you okay. Remember, remember, because I'm not a doctor, I'm just reading things off off another website. So hopefully this information I I just talked about and gave to you will help those out there that I've seen post leg pain issues and maybe give you some ideas of what you could do to better your lives. One thing I do wish is I, that I had all this information 12 years ago and maybe I would have a more decent life because, you know, of the pain that I have in walking and all those things that just contribute to neuropathy, leg pain, and peripheral neuropathy in general. But again, thank you for listening to this podcast. And I just want to say that I hope this week coming forward is going to be better than last week. Go enjoy yourselves. Try to get out there and walk if you can, even if you use a walker. Let's build up the strength in your legs. Go spend some time with your family and read a book. Until next week, I will see you then. As we come to a close, it's my hope this podcast and other sources, such as product reviews that I have discussed today, can better our lives and give us some relief dealing with neuropathy. This episode plus others are posted every Monday on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. And finally, whatever life throws at you, even if it hurts you, just be strong and fight through it. Remember, strong walls shake, but never collapse. Talk to you next Monday.